Hello, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box just below this video. Welcome to my weekly vlog where I sit and chat to you about the things that I have been making in the preceding week. Um, I knit and I crochet and I spin and like ever, ever so occasionally there'll be some weaving content as well. I'm a new weaver and I'm just dabbling in that craft and trying to um, get into the swing of that but I haven't done that for a few weeks. If you are new to the channel, a very, very big welcome. I've had quite a few new subscribers over the last week or so, uh, so you are most welcome here and I'd love to chat to you. So if you feel like leaving a comment below, then please do. Um, I always try to respond to everyone's comments. As you can see, I'm not at home. I do not live on the sea. <laughs> as much as I like to think I'm a mermaid on occasion. <laughs> um, I live in a small town called Penarth. Um, in South Wales in the UK uh, I'm very lucky to have um, a wonderful beach to come to which is less than 10 minutes walk from my house I'm always appreciative of that but especially right now I come out every day for a walk and I thought I'd record my introduction from the beach today there isn't really much beach to speak of <laughs> I live on what is basically part of the Bristol Channel which has one of the biggest tidal ranges um, in the world I believe and the sea is right in today, so there's no beach to speak of. I'll uh, spring you around in a minute and show you the tiny little <laughs> bit of beach. And if you've watched my videos before, you'll see when the tide's out, there are miles and miles of pebbly beach uh, to explore. So uh, yeah, it's quite fun when the tide's right in. So yes, I should be back in a little while to chat to you about what I've been working on. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy uh, a few scenes from my walk and from here at the beach today. Yeah, this is the sum total of the beach. <laughs> it's a few square metres in front of me. I'm going to try and do a wee bit of beach combing. There's no litter picking here for me to do, which is nice. Um, but I'm going to be on the lookout um, for some pieces of glass to add to the jar that I have in my bathroom at home. So yeah, even in that tiny weedy bit of beach, there's plenty of treasure to be found. So this is the end of the beach that I most often hang about on. And there's a little bit more beach <laughs> to be seen here. But I think I'm going to go for a wander along and see if I can do my two minute beach clean before I head home. While we're here and I found a quiet spot on the beach, I thought I'd tell you about my finished object for this week. And it's my Love Note sweater, which is a knitted sweater. Uh, pattern is by Tin Can Knits. And I used some U and Ply um, wool silk blend for my Love Note, held together with uh, Rowan Kid Silk Haze, which is a mohair silk blend. I'm really pleased with how mine turned out. I used just two skeins of four ply yarn, so it's a great way to get a garment for um, an affordable price if you want to dabble in the indie dyed yarn world. That could be quite expensive for a garment. I made the extra large, I think it's XL XXL size, and I'll check when I get home what chest circumference that is. I knew I was cutting it fine um, with my yarn by just having two skeins. Um, I originally thought I would do the cropped version of the sweater. And even for that, with my two skeins, um, I knew I'd be slightly short, but I thought I'd wing it and see what happened. In the end, I decided to go for the long version rather than the cropped version. Um, but that has meant that I have short sleeves rather than long sleeves. But I'm completely happy with that. I've got a really nice length to the garment, a length that I'm happy with. And I often wear layered outfits, so I have a long sleeve t-shirt on over a short sleeve sweater. It's absolutely perfect to fit into my wardrobe. I'll step back a bit so you can see the garment in its entirety. Now 
I did the high-low hem detail so the back hem is slightly lower than the front so hopefully that gives you a good idea of what my love note looks like I'll try and take some photos while I'm here too and I usually do a finished sweater happy dance so I reckon that has to be done on the beach as well So as much as I love hanging around with you at the beach, I reckon it's time for me to pack up my stuff and head home and record the rest of this episode for you. I've just edited the footage that I took down at the beach and there are a couple of things um, that I just wanted to add about the Love Note sweater before I stop harping on about it. Um, so I guess the first thing to say um, is the pattern knits up pretty quickly. I did start this as one of my 12 cast on projects at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And um, obviously I've finished it now in April. I haven't worked on it constantly, but it was a really, really quick knit. Um, you knit the main part of the sweater on six millimeter needles and then I think the ribbon is four or four and a half millimeter needles. For my sleeves, if you watched my um, knit and chat video where I was working on the last bits of this love note, um, you will know that I came to the last bit of my yarn, I'd finished the body of the sweater and I knew I wouldn't have enough yarn for full sleeves on this garment. So I basically split what I had in half and knit a round or two calculated how much yarn in terms of grams I was using for each row uh, and then figured out how many rows I thought I would get out of the sleeves it gave myself a little bit of leeway on that and I actually have a little bit of each ball left over maybe a gram or two um, but I ended up knitting um, 12 rows from the pickup and obviously the yoke sort of comes down um, sort of fairly far down your uh, arm anyway um, but I knit 12 rows of plain um, stockingette stitch and then I think I did six rounds of rib and um, before I did the rib um, just to cinch it in a little bit um, I think I had 64 stitches um, were the number of stitches I had on my sleeve so I ended up doing um, one row of knit two knit two together um, all the way around uh, before I added the um, ribbing detail and that actually worked out perfectly it gave me a sleeve that's just about elbow length um, which is perfect uh, the other thing to note is that my garment did grow a little bit with blocking I would say maybe it stretched an inch or two um, and that actually mm, made it the perfect length so um, I'm more than happy that that happened um, obviously it's a super wash yarn and super wash yarn th does tend to stretch a little bit so yeah all round thumbs up for my love note I really love it it's going to be so cozy and warm and I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this my lovingly called fluffy duck sweater is done <laughs> what else do I have for knitting I'm going to show you two works in progress but I've only bought one up with me I'll show you the um, other project next week probably be a finished object by them um, but I have put in a little bit of work on a sock project this week um, my sock mojo has been sadly lacking recently I think because I've become a bit more addicted recently to garment making um, whereas I used to use socks as my sort of go-to round and round don't think about it um, portable knitting project a lot of the sweaters that I'm knitting have got stocking at portions to them so or they're entirely stocking at so they don't sort of take much um, concentration or brain power so socks have sort of been overtaken by those portions of my sweaters um, for that kind of in front of the tv um, don't have the brain power to think about it knitting but this week I picked up a sock again um, for no other reason than I just stumbled across the project bag and it was there um, so I have one finished sock to show you I'm just glancing around to see if my sock blockers are anywhere handy and I don't think they are so um it doesn't really matter uh, so this is my first sock finished and I cast this on back in 
February, I think, when um, I went out to dinner with um, Zoe and Jenny. Hi, Zoe and Jenny. And I needed um, a really small portable project and I didn't have any socks on the needles. So I grabbed a, a skein of yarn that was already wound up um, from my basket and um, started knitting this sock. So um, it's been quite a slow process, but one is now finished. The yarn is from um, the yarn tree. I'm not sure if she's still dying anymore, but a couple of years ago, she did a lot of um, sort of like club colors and a lot of them had sort of geeky or nerdy themes to them. She did quite a lot of superhero themed. There was a Star Wars theme. I'm looking over that way because I've got some of her other skeins in my stash to knit through at some point. Um, but this particular colorway came from the Halloween box, I think, and it's called The Pumpkin, The Witch and The Graveyard. 75% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% uh, gold Stellina. Um, so there is a sparkle to this. I think you can just about see. Can you see up there? Camera doesn't always pick that up. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. And I showed again a little bit of footage in one of my extras of me knitting this on the beach and the sock was glinting in the sunshine. Uh, so yeah, first sock is finished. I just knit um, my standard sort of plain recipe. I did an afterthought heel um, so as not to interrupt the... Uh, I quite liked the way the um, yarn was kind of like uh, sort of pulling and almost sort of faux striping and I didn't want to interrupt that on the front of the sock so I put in an afterthought heel. When I'm finishing a sock I always try to make sure that if I'm sitting down to finish I have time to cast on the second uh, because I I don't really suffer from second sock syndrome but I think once the sock's on the needles there's no excuse not to get going with it. Um, so yeah I've started on the second sock, uh, there's still a long way to go on this one um, but I've done the ribbing and I started on the leg of the sock. I usually work my socks top down and I've got a slice of pumpkin pie uh, because that seemed to be fitting with the uh, colourway for the progress keeper on there. That just helps me count the number of rows that I'm doing for my sock and uh, that is living in my TARDIS project bag. On to crochet next and I have a finished object for crochet and it's the same project that you've seen me working on over the last couple of weeks if you've been watching my weekly vlogs for a while and it's a really basic um, granny rectangle um, blanket basically so the story behind this just a quick recap for anyone who is coming here for the first time I started a crocheted tunic top for myself from this yarn which is from Stylecraft. It's Stylecraft Batik Elements which is a um, blend of wool and acrylic and I made this tunic top for myself and I just did not like the fit at all. Um, so I ripped the project out a couple of weeks ago um, and I decided just to repurpose the yarn. It's a double knit yarn, I held it double and I used a six millimetre hook um, and just started um, in the centre as you do with grannies um, but instead of doing a granny square I started with a chain and worked um, each side of the chain to create a rectangle and then just kept going until the yarn ran out and it's a good I would say cot size uh, blanket or maybe like a child sort of lap blanket um, I toyed with the idea of gifting it to my in-laws but um, obviously the project is not big enough for that and I didn't really want to um, get any more yarn to put into the project I just wanted to use up what I have and um, I've got a teeny tiny amount left so I'll just put that into my scrap basket and I'm sure that will um, get used for something eventually um, I did finish off with a row of um, double crochet in UK terms or single crochet um, in American terms to create a really simple edge to the blanket um, but this is now going to go in my box of things to donate to charity um, once the charity that I support is accepting donations again uh, so yeah that was quite a that's been quite a fun again really simple kind of therapeutic project for um, when I needed something really simple in terms of crochet you can't get any simpler than doing those uh, treble or doubles if you're in the US clusters just a nice rhythmic round and round um, and yeah it was nice to um, repurpose that yarn um, that I knew I wouldn't be turning into to anything else anytime soon so um, a good stash buster. Spinning this week um, again my spinning has been a little bit sporadic um, I 
towards the end of last week um, I was suffering from some lower back pain it's a recurring thing that I have had through my entire adult life and every now and then it just plays up and towards the end of last week was definitely like that um, I was okay walking and standing up and also if I was stretched out lying down perfect but I was finding it really hard to sit for any length of time <laughs> sounds ridiculous doesn't it um, but that meant I couldn't really sit at my spinning wheel um, I had to go at some drop spindling I finished off a little sample that I was making um, but even though I was able to do that standing up I think just the motion of having my sort of hands held up um, was also sort of pulling on my back so um, I didn't really work on spinning again until yesterday um, my back's feeling much better now it's still a little bit twinge I have to be careful um, but overall um, it's pretty good now um, so I hopped on my spinning wheel yesterday and I should have hopefully a spinning video coming up as a yarn and yarn extra this week um, but um, so what I finished rambling aren't I um, so on my wheel I finished the first colour Woo! <laughs> that is blowing out something chronic and um, it's a it is really bright it's a nice sort of like highlighter green colorway um which is a blue face lester yarn and it's part of a trilogy that i purchased from curio yarns and i am going to um three ply this and there are two other colors in the braid that i bought is 150 grams and i'm just going to um finish spinning through them ply them up and I'm hoping to get a shawl out of it if the yarn is fine enough um yeah it depends how much it sort of blooms puffs up um once it's been washed I'm having a look on here I have no idea where the end of this yarn is so I'm gonna have to faff around and find the end again before I can ply this uh, so yes uh, first bobbin for that project finished and then currently on my wheel, I have some Rolags that I um, carded up on my uh, hand card is, and that's what the spinning video um, coming up will be about. And I am probably three quarters of the way through spinning that. So as you can see, <laughs> I bought my entire flyer up and uh, the bobbin in progress. Um, I didn't really want to dismantle the bobbin because it's set up quite nicely for um, spinning these yarns and I'm trying to practice my um long backward draw with this which is um yeah it's fun <laughs> but I am pretty slow <laughs> which sounds um a little bit uh, crazy because most people who um enjoy doing the backward draw enjoy the speediness of it but as with anything new it takes practice and I'm sure the speed will come the more that I do it um, but I'm having a battle with my hands at the moment because they want to default to the short forward draw that I've been used to um, But I think I'm getting there. I think I'm winning the battle <laughs> So yeah, both of those are kind of spins in progress and I hope to be able to work on those more again this week And then on my spindle, I think I showed you this in progress last week I have this teeny tiny little sample of Blueface Lester and Raimi um, Which was a sort of like free little gift sample from Hilltop Cloud in this gorgeous deep um, green colourway so I just spun that up on my Turkish spindle and two plied that um, with itself um, and th oh this colour it, the, oh, it's just so beautiful absolutely gorgeous so yeah they're my spinning projects for this week I feel like I haven't had much content as I usually do in these videos um, but that's kind of because I left the project downstairs but oh well um, I get to round up this um, video I might tell you about a project that I'm hoping to start soon I treated myself this week to um, some yarn which I don't often do these days because I do have a stack of yarn but um, I have been not able to stop thinking about the yarn that I the hand spun yarn that I finished I think last week so I'll grab you that and show you to remind you um, so this was a uh, Shetland and a crossbred Gotland uh, bat that I purchased and this is the yarn that I spun and I just love these are just entirely my colours um, and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about it so I decided that I wanted to try and get this on the needles fairly quickly and I'm hoping to put it into the yoke of a colourwork sweater um, I've purchased the Otra 
Outra, Outra pattern from Skein Deer. Um, I purchased it quite a while ago um, when she had a sale. And uh, my lovely friend Robin, who is medieval listing and has the Stitching Between Pages podcast here on YouTube, um, recently knit one and showed hers off on Instagram. And it looks lovely. Um, and I thought this, when I looked, um, this should be enough to do the, it's pretty simple colour work pattern um, on the yoke. And then it's miles and miles of stocking stitch. So I hopped online and I was hoping to purchase some... Um, Funnel Garn PT2, which is the yarn recommended in the pattern. Um, the only place in the UK you can get that, as far as I am aware, uh, there may be other places, but I couldn't find any obvious when I was Googling, is the Isolde website. And um, Isolde are only um, sending out certain products each week. Um, so I wasn't able to order it. But of course, Murphy's Law, I had an email from them today saying this week's yarn for dispatch is phenol garn pt2 but anyway i'd already purchased something else so i'm going with my something else um so from wild and woolly which is a shop in london um i purchased some onion nettle yarn it's some yarn i've been wanting to try for a little while um and it's basically a plastic free yarn so it's um, designed to be a sock yarn um, 70 percent wool 30 percent nettle fibers and the nettle fibers are meant to give the sort of same strength as a nylon wood in a traditional um, kind of sock brand um, so I purchased this um, sort of charcoal almost black colour in the hopes that it would be a reasonable match for my hand spun. My hand spun is probably more like a sport weight than a four ply so I think it, my hand spun is slightly thicker try and put those um, sort of together I'll zoom, zoom in on that to see if you can see but I think they'll be okay and this was a really affordable yarn it was something like um, five or a ball I think uh, for a 50 gram ball um, so I bought um, a sweater quantity for I think less than 40 pounds I can't remember exactly um, but yes so I'm hoping um, this will be my colour work and then I'll have a nice simple um, charcoal almost black jumper and I know this colour is not going to be the best to knit with but um, I'm planning to do it hopefully soon get this on the. i might even get this on the needles this week um as a little treat to myself having finished my love note i know i've got tons of other sweaters on the needles but i really just want to see how these work together and there's some interesting steaking in the um otra um so if you're not familiar with steaking it's basically you cut into your knitting to make uh, various um sort of like holes in it basically it's usually done on a cardigan so um knitting colour work in the round is easier than knitting it in the flat because you don't have to purl and um, so for colour work cardigans often they're knit in the round and then cut up the front um, I think the Otra also has armhole steaks and maybe some neck steaks I don't know if you watch Skein Deer you know she's a big fan of, of steaking so um, yeah I mean it should be quite a fun and engaging knit particularly at the top and then it goes into sort of reams and reams of um, stocking it so yes this will be going on to the needles this week I reckon. While I was purchasing that yarn I decided to get some for um, experimenting in socks as well and um, so I picked up a couple of skeins in each of these colours. This is an olivey green. Um, it's not quite showing true to colour I think probably because of my yellow um, but it's definitely um, olivey and this is a nice um, sort of like bright orangey kind of colour. I'm planning on using these for some nice patterned socks at some point. So yeah that's my future knitting, my dream knitting if you will. Um, I'm just yeah as I say I just haven't been able to stop thinking about um, what I could knit with this skein that I recently spun so that led me down the path of um, looking for yarn and buying some <laughs> So yes, I think that's everything for the making this week. All that remains for me to say is a big thank you to everyone who is here watching the channel. Um, I truly, truly appreciate you spending time with me um, as I sit and waffle on um, about what I've been making. It's a really nice distraction for me at the moment. Um, if you follow the channel, you'll know I'm putting up um, quite a lot of extra content at the moment and um, it's a way to keep myself distracted as much as anything else and um, I appreciate not everyone has the time to keep up with everything so if you are only here for the weekly chats that's absolutely fine you won't miss anything by not watching the yarn and yarns extras and for those extra videos I do try and keep them um, broadly speaking um, around crafting content but I do also try and label them so 
you can dip in and out of those. If there's stuff there that um, you don't think is for you, then um, I'm trying to keep it quite clear so that you don't waste your precious time um, clicking on a video that, that doesn't really have content that you're interested in. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been able to support the channel via a coffee donation this week. I've had a couple, um, which is always really nice and um, I try, I'm try. i trying to save that pot of money of my coffee donations to put back into improving the content here on the podcast, um, funding some giveaways, some postage for those giveaways and uh, a few people have asked if I would uh, use the money they donate to, to treat myself and um, so I have recently um, ordered a couple of new spindles which are on the way to me, both have been dispatched. Um, so thank you so much. Um, if anyone specifically mentions that in their donations um, going forward, um, I think what I will do is I've got a little pot, a little fund of money I'm trying to save for an Ashford e-spinner 3 and I've been trying to save for almost two years. <laughs> I nearly got there at the end of last year but then I had to buy glasses. <laughs> I had to purchase two pairs of glasses so that wiped almost a couple of hundred pounds out of that fund um and then obviously i'm not working at the moment so um there's not too much going into that fund but um, i'm i'm creeping closer i'm creeping closer so maybe by the end of this year um i'll be able to purchase it that for myself um i just i'm really interested in the idea of having um a, like a smaller portable spinning wheel and also one that i could get a jumbo flyer for so i can um experiment a little bit more with art yarns the other wheels that I have are both vintage wheels. I've not yet been able to afford like a modern wheel. So um, yeah, that's kind of a bit of an aside, but uh, <laughs> yeah, if you donate to coffee and you say you specifically want me to treat myself, um, then your money will go into that fund, I think from now on. Um, there's obviously no obligation. And um, if you're not able to support uh, the channel financially, then uh, please don't feel any guilt over that um i will be here recording and um talking at you <laughs> regardless of uh whether i receive coffee donations or not i just really enjoy doing this and um by watching by subscribing by liking the videos by sharing that you're watching um you are supporting the community here at yarn and yarns over in the Ravelry group we've got two make-alongs going on and I thought um, I would um, show you once again the prize that we will be having for our new techniques make-along just to try and tempt a few more people to join in. Um, basically that make-along will be running until the end of May and the idea is to try something new. Um, so over in the thread we've got people who have been trying um, colourwork socks, Tunisian crochet, making toys, trying out new stitch patterns, uh, double knitting, did I mention double knitting, brioche knitting, there's all sorts going on over there. Um, you can spin, you can weave, you can crochet, you can knit, you can even do some embroidery if you want. Just have a go at something you've not tried before and pop a photo of your progress um, over in the Ravelry thread. You don't need to finish your project, um, just have a go, join in. And I have a wonderful prize which was donated by the lovely Angela and Andy over at Attic Spin Dye um, and they have sponsored that giveaway um, by donating this gorgeous skein of their yarn uh, the colour weight is called Misty Wash and it's all sorts of beautiful sort of bluey green tones and um, there's some uh, sort of like um, terracotta um, speckles in there as well um, some chartreuse it's just gorgeous it's gonna be really hard for me to give that away <laughs> um, there's a lovely spinning wheel progress keeper um, attached to that skein as well and they also donated one of their pin badges actually I think I've got two of these to give away um, this is spot the rainbow zebra and um, spot is raising awareness for misdiagnosed and invisible conditions um, particularly they are supporters of the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and I'll put links to um, where you can find out more about both attic spin dye and Ehlers-Danlos um, syndrome um, so there is a spot to the zebra I'll put those links below and this is the skein of yarn that you could be in with a chance of winning if you enter in the new techniques make along um, we also have the year-long um, 12 cast-ons make along going on so anything if you were here at the 
um, beginning of this year and you joined in with our cast on frenzy um, then you just need to work on your projects and once they're finished and pop a picture of your finished project over in the finished object thread and I'll be doing draws every quarter for that make along so yeah that's everything I think hmm. <laughs> I hope you are managing to stay safe and well please leave a comment below let, let me know what you've been working on while you've been watching or just generally what you're working on this week um just check in let me know how you're doing um i'd love to chat to you below so until we get to, to spend time together again i hope that you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big woolly hugs to you all bye for now